name is Kashi Isaac Salau. Nigeria is my heritage. I am Nigeria through and through. I feel that Nigeria shaped me even though I've lived permanently again in the UK since I was a teenager. I'm a planner and a stylist on paper, but I believe myself to be a creator. I create lasting memories for my clients and this means that they stay in touch with me even after the wedding. Um, I've had my clients get in touch with me even for their baby christening, even for their honeymoon. They just, they just become friends forever. So the first memory I have of a wedding was my auntie's wedding because I wasn't obviously at my parents' wedding. I think what I remember most about that wedding was the splendor, the grandeur, that you know, there was just so much. Everyone was happy, even even uncles that I've, that I've seen and they've been in a bad mood. On that day, everyone's happy. My name is Bilem Zaramariam and I am of Eritrean heritage. So my business name is Queen of Hearts Floral Design. I am, uh, as it says on the tin, I'm a floral designer um, and I basically cater to events and weddings um, and I bring flower power. I'd say my first uh, memory is probably via photos and that's my parents' wedding. Um, they'd kill me if they, they hear me say this, but this is 42 years ago. Uh, so yeah, that was my first first memory um, and it was a beautiful memory. I look, at, look back on it now and I take inspiration from it now and yeah beautiful memories there's so much food there's so much opulence there's, there's just so much joy and celebration it's absolutely beautiful i think the memories that i more carry with me was the opportunity to be part of the wedding uh, so in my culture um, the, the, the younger sister or the youngest person who can read would read out the letter of the engagement to the, to the groom's family. So I was the one that read the letter of my auntie's wedding and that memory stuck with me. And my little niece that read the letter of my wedding, she's always in my head, even though that I've gotten married like ages ago. My name is Tessa Williams and I'm of Caribbean heritage. My business name is A Touch of Neve. It's a luxury wedding and event planning company and we are based in Notting Hill, West London. My parents were born in Dominica, which is a small island between the French islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe. My father was born in Point Michel and my mother was born in Scotshead. Scotshead is in the south of Dominica, um, which is in between the Atlantic and the Caribbean seas. And where they both join, I've heard it's an amazing sight and one I've yet to experience. They got married a year before I was born, in 1982 to be precise. And I just remember seeing wedding pictures. They had such a big wedding. Um, they had like seven bridesmaids and groomsmen and flower girls. I remember seeing my mum's wedding cake, like a really big four tier wedding cake. And then she had two extra cakes as well on each side. And I was just like, I love weddings and I want to, you know, get married one day and have a wedding like this. My name is Shola Adedeo and I'm Nigerian born, but not bred. My company name is Designer Wedding Planner. I'm a wedding planner and I serve London design. I create luxury wedding planning and also looking after various couples from different cultures, but mainly Nigerian, Afro-Caribbean, black um, couples. And I'm also known as the stylish wedding planner. My first memory of a wedding was um, my big sister's wedding. It had nothing that we have now. And it was, to my eyes now, it was one of the best weddings. But at the same time, when I look back now, it was chaotic. I feel that before, weddings in the past cater to the family friends, your parents' friends, and your aunties and your uncles, and it didn't have much to do with a couple per se. Nowadays, because the couples are paying for their weddings, they're the ones that call the shots. So weddings now are more controlled, a bit more money and also there's more um, couples can put more excitement into their weddings they can think about social media things that they've seen on social media things that they've seen in America and other countries Australia and that's the things that they want we can bring that dream to the couples and that's what I try and do for my couples bring the dream what do I enjoy most about weddings now I think I think it's, it, there's so many aspects of weddings that, you know, from the planning, from even from the anxieties. I know it's really strange to say you love it. You're just there to, to let them know, I've been through this. 
it's gonna be okay even until the wedding day the ceremony the anticipation the look on the groom's face the food the celebration the joy again like back at what I enjoyed when I was a little child is what I enjoy I just love to see I love to see families unite I love to see them the handshake I just love to see two merging into one it's absolutely beautiful I can't even explain it <laughs> wow the diversity I think the diversity, the culture, you know, I was a cultural bride and I love catering to cultural brides. Um, I think cultural diversity in, in where we live at the moment is we're like a melting pot and we see loads of different nationalities coming together. And I think for me, that's like massively, massively important and, and really enjoyable to witness. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy learning different cultures and I love seeing my clients' visions tend to fruition. Ah, uh, the aspect of my culture. You're asking a Nigerian, hey? Okay, uh, you know, it is the foods. Truly, truly, when I make it to heaven, I want to take this, some jollof rice for the angels up there. I am so confident of my of Nigerian food. Like, it is something. When I was, when I was back at 9 to 5, I would take food to, like, African day. I would, you know, serve people. I'm so confident. Like, you know, just come and taste some of this. I think it's the food, and I also say the style. I think the style is very colourful, especially with the traditions. I'd say, you know, the Yoruba tradition, the Igbo tradition, the Hausa tradition is just full of colours. There's a lot of colours and those colours come with representation. And I, I would also say the presentation, there's a lot of presentation, the, the way you just like give those things. So it, it, they're just little things like rice like maize like yam but then it's all packaged you, you know it just looks like it is a lot more and they're like take this so i can have your daughter it's a lot of soul it's a lot of i think the ancestors are really happy the language would be number one as i think it shows your identity and it's the essence of every person um i would love like my children to inherit that as well even though I can't speak the language fluently, I can understand it and I teach my children what I can. I would also say the food as well, you know, being able to cook some traditional meals, not just, you know, nowadays how the children are with these microwave takeaways. No, we want some good home cooked meals, some recipes that's been passed down from our ancestors. I believe every aspect of my culture is quite important. Especially now, hearing about my heritage. As I said, I wasn't born, bred in Nigeria. I was born there and I came over to London when I was five. I had all my education in this country. So I'm still learning about my culture from my parents and trying to sort of see bits of it that I feel rhyme with what's happening nowadays. The food is really important when it comes to weddings because even back in the day, when it was my sister's wedding, for example, my mother always wanted to make sure that the food was enough. If the food wasn't enough, then that whole wedding, that whole party was a major failure. And I find that that's happening now as well. I'm a very proud Eritrean. Um, and I think when culture, I'd say definitely food. I think this is a very, very big thing when it comes to Afro-Caribbean weddings. Food is the absolute most important thing. I think whatever happens, uh, if the food was tasty, then that's the memory that people take. Um, as much as I'd love to say as a floral designer that they take the memory of the interior, it is, but I think people just remember the taste. So food is number one, definitely. We have quite a few dishes, um, but the traditional national dish of Eritrea is called injera. And it's almost like a uh, sour pancake style with you can have vegetable stew or you can have meat stew um, and loads and loads of different vegan dishes believe it or not um, the vegan palette has been something that Eritreans have done for thousands of years and it's massively it's it's really popular now in in Europe and the Western world but in Africa it's always been on the menu vegan vegan um, inspired dishes are super popular um, and yeah that's that's kind of what we have so my role when I'm working with my clients, especially my Nigerian, Ghanaian clients, is to make sure that I speak with the parents. I pride myself on that. That's my little special niche. I speak, I have a session with the parents just to see what they want. Because at the same time, it's the couple's wedding and I get that, but at the same time, it's also that mother's wedding as well. So I give them one session so they can tell me what they want, how they want the culture to run through the wedding and just to sort of be inclusive. 
And quite often when I do that, I find that the parents' shoulders go, huh, at least we've been considered. Because these young people don't know what, or they don't understand what. So including the parents, I'm not saying I'm gonna accept everything that the parents want, because ultimately I'm there for the couple, but I will take what the parents say to consideration. Uh, the first step of the traditional wedding is the, the letter writing. So there is sort of like an introduction from the groom's family. They write a letter of proposal to the bride's family. And then they say in there, we would like to marry your daughter. You know, what's your take on this? This is our son. He, he's a graduate. You know, basically, what's he bringing to the table? And then uh, the family reads the letter they take a break just to act like they're thinking about it. They're probably thinking about it. And then they, they come back and they go, okay, well, we will give you our daughter. We'll, we'll put it in writing. So they, they say verbally that they will be giving you the, um, their daughter. Then you need to go and prepare um, a list. You get everything together and bring it to the traditional wedding. So that's how, it, that's the beginning of, so this is all before the traditional wedding even starts. <laughs> so my traditional wedding uh, was big. <laughs> that's one way to describe it. And I honestly probably had about maybe 400 to 500 people at the traditional part of my wedding. The white wedding with the white wedding dress was actually in Dubai. So it was still a healthy number at 200 people. Don't ask. But, um, but the actual traditional, which was probably for both families, probably the most important part. Um, and the uh, traditional part of that, the asking for the hand in marriage is a massive, massive part of, of Eritrean culture. And I'd say East African, North African, and actually Middle Eastern culture, because as East Africans, we are mixed with lots of different um, bloodlines and things like that. So we share, it's a beautiful thing, but we share a very similar culture um, in terms of the whole wedding process. It tends to be about a seven day process. Um, so anything from the henna party happens before the actual traditional engagement. Um, you know, the women come together, it's a whole situation. You know, everybody, you can have a tent or in your back garden, or you can actually have, you can hire a hall to do that. Um, and that's kind of like a ladies only party. It's like in the prep preparation before the big day. Your bride price is returned to the groom and is returned with a speech. Now the speech we then read, thank you for all this. Thank you for honoring us and for bringing all these items and the money. We now give you back the money and it's all captured on camera with the parents all begging on their knees and, and, and the parents and the family of the groom. The groom's courtesy flat, full bow on the floor in front of my father's, um, right on my father's feet. <laughs> and, and then they read it back. Thank you so much for all this. We now give you back this money because our child is not for sale. There is no um, amount of money that can get you our child all we ask in return is you take care of our child and then we bless you both and then we say that you 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 know they then say prayers we pray that you have so many children and they give you advice and they go you know this is how you should treat your um your wife and all that and my nigerian wedding started 33 years ago October as well and um, my mother was the actual wedding planner because in those days wedding planners hadn't come across from America like now um, so my mother was the main wedding planner she coordinated everything um, I remember going um, with my mum wedding dress shopping and we tried all the usual shops John Lewis and all the other little shops and um, we eventually came to this um, shop Losner's in Stamford Hill I'm not sure if it's still there now but it was the go-to place and it had all the dresses, so a Jewish shop, and they had all the dresses in there, in their store. And if you couldn't find a dress in Losner's, then where would you, where else would you go? So we got into Losner's and um, I had to ask for a bigger dress because at that time I was about seven months pregnant. So which is why my dress, this is my original wedding dress from 33 years ago, heavy laced and ivory. And I had to have one that had the, the detailing at the front that was a bit lower because it had to hide my, my bump at the time. And once I had the dress, then you know to yourself, I am actually getting married. I was really excited. I mean, now looking at it, you think, well, there could have been other choices, but this was the dress. And for me, I said yes to this dress. 
Traditional weddings required a lot of preparation for large amounts of food, also several cakes. The cakes were not shown to the couple until the day and on the day it was covered with a piece of lace. Madras material, which is what I'm wearing now, is a traditional material which we use to prepare our outfits. Madras comes from a place in India, which is now called Chennai. Um, it's made of cotton, but before it was made of banana fibers before. So when we wear the Madras material, this reminds us of our African heritage and the white shirt reminds us of our English heritage as well. So we have two outfits for women. So we'd have the zip, which means skirt, which is what I'm wearing right now, with a white blouse. And then you have to have black shoes as well, black formal shoes. You cannot have any other color shoes. Yeah. And the other outfit would be a wobdouille, which is a dress. So just think of Cinderella, ball gown. So it was made also of the madras material, but it's very delicate. It has a lot of layers of lace and it's quite an expensive dress to make. So it's very grand and, oh, I want one made now. <laughs> I wish I had one made right now. And then to finish off the outfit, you'd have to have a tekkas, which is a hat. So it's like a flat hat. One peak would mean that you was married and you was taken. Only married women could wear that. Yeah. So one peak would mean that they are married. Two peaks means that they are spoken for. Three pleats would mean that they are taken and four mean that you can still try <laughs> so yes it's so beautiful because you have all the ladies all the single females your nieces everyone behind you they're, they're bringing the bride so they're singing there's a lot of music there's a lot of African drums there's a lot of folklore kind of thing going on and then everyone's behind you and they're singing and they do this on purpose the groom is still waiting the groom's still waiting. No, you can't just get access to the bride like that. It's, it, look, you've, you've paid so much money. You brought all this food, but you can't just get access. So the Alaga woman is there and she's like bringing everyone on. She's like, can you, you need to pay more money. Do you really want to see this bride? And the, the groom goes and gets all his naira and his spraying and everything. And the Alaga woman, and then she asks the crowd, should I bring her in? And of course, by this time, everyone goes, come on, bring her in. And then you come in. You'd have your core numbers of guests and then anybody else who hears about it that remotely knows you or remotely knows your mum or your family, they would pick up their handbag and they would attend the wedding. So when it comes to catering for a wedding in those days, we had no numbers. My mother had to just make sure there was enough food because it was counted as a shame if you didn't have enough food to feed your guests. So there was always, there was enough food. There's, my mother prefers it to be lots extra that people could take home than not to have enough. Because the next day after the wedding, that's how people would gauge how well a wedding was. Asking for my hand in marriage was, was probably the most beautiful thing about getting married for me. Um, because I'm very close to my father. I'm a big daddy's girl. And I'm his only one daughter. Um, so I just have one brother. So this was a huge part for part of important part for our family. Um, so my husband, before any type of party happened, he asked for my hand in marriage, an intimate conversation between him and my dad. Um, and that kind of agreement happened and then we got engaged. But the more public engagement, traditional engagement, happens in front of family, it tends more to be the men. So the men on my side and the men on his side come together and there is a whole discussion about dowry. There's a whole discussion about, you know, the worth of the bride. And this has been quite controversial in more recent times because a lot of the time now, there are a lot of families from the girl side that actually don't accept dowry anymore. So there are family, it's each to their own. And something really funny is, you know, my dad has a great relationship with my husband. And, you know, when we were engaged, he said, my, this is my one daughter, I need 50, 50 camels. So different parts of Africa, dowry is, is joked about in different ways, but on the east side of Africa, camels is, a, is you know, one of the signature animals that we have. And so my dad used to joke around with my husband and say, I need 50 camels, which is like 50,000 pounds. <laughs> so, you know, 
it's great and we had lots of jokes and there was lots of laughs about it but my dad is a very modern man and you know we as long as his daughter was happy he was happy to you know hand, hand his daughter um, in, in the engagement process and when it comes to the music for the wedding because um, my dad was a prince like he owned his own business back in those days he used to print for you know lots of Nigerian musicians used to come across from Nigeria so my dad actually bought the musicians, there's about a 12 piece band that he paid for to come from Nigeria to come over here to, pay, to play at the wedding. So there'll be the, the, what, we, what we call the Onilu, the, the band, and they would play the music right the way through. Also had a DJ, but this band, well-known band, and so if, if everyone heard, heard the name, they'd say, oh my goodness, it's a really good party because so-and-so band is going to be playing. What they don't do nowadays is that parties finish at 11 o'clock nowadays. Back then, you could pay, play, pay a bit extra for bands, for the venue to stay open and would have what they call all night parties. So it was like a rave. It was a real wedding. Like now, weddings finish at 11 o'clock, you think, oh God, it's finished, it's done, okay, that's it. But <laughs> rocking till six o'clock, amazing. Dinner usually consisted of curry goat and rice or mountain chicken and rice and peas. We'd have boiled plantain, we'd have roasted yam as well, which is also similar to what we have today at our modern weddings, which is something I'm happy about because it's been carried down through many generations. At the end of the evening, music would be played by live bands. Um, it would be like a guitar or a banjo and people would dance in quadrilles which is really good. We don't have that now. Nowadays we do the candy dance, <laughs> which I'm sure everybody knows, but in those days it was quadrilles, which is something that was practiced um, in the 19th century. It's very special. There's lots of music, there's lots of color. Um, I'm wearing uh, my mother's tribes, traditional dress. My mum and my dad are different tribes. There is nine tribes in Eritrea, and one of the tribes is actually called Bilem. Bilen basically means pupil of the eye, so it's like apple of my eye. But it's also one of the one tribes in Eritrea, it's my father's tribe. My mum is the Tigrinya tribe, which is one of the main languages that is spoken by a lot of Eritreans. Um, and even, no matter what uh, tribe you are, a lot of people speak that main language. Um, and it's the, the language that I grew up listening to. Do you know what? I, I, I've, I've done so many weddings, yeah? And I've, I've done the English wedding and I think the heart of your soul as a lady of culture is your traditional wedding because there no one in that room feels as important as you do on that day the whole tradition is to make you feel so important and it's so beautiful and then you're coming and they're like no don't walk too fast he's gonna get access to you too early and then go walk slow and then you're there with your head the newly wedded couple will then be presented with a choice of foods that have been prepared from the relatives, also the community, and that's what they would take to their new home. When they would leave and go to their new home, they would usually have one week off from working on the fields. They'd have that one week off, which was allowed. Nowadays, we call that honeymoon, where we fly out to you know beautiful places like the Caribbean <laughs> to enjoy our honeymoon. No Eritrean wedding is intimate. There is no, I think that goes for any African and Caribbean wedding, to be honest. I think it's in our DNA, you know, to just have big weddings. It's like when you say you're having a 20 people or 30 people wedding, which at the moment is extremely difficult for Afro-Caribbean brides, you know, this is really why I have personally a lot of clients that have pushed back until next year because they can't see themselves having 30 people or now 15 people or whatever the re restrictions allow. So it's really been interesting this year to see that, you know, to see the fact that culture is massively part of the reasons why a lot of Afro-Caribbean weddings haven't happened this year because of the amount of guests you can, um, you know, invite. So culture is massively, massively important. And in that culture is the loud music, it's the jumping, it's the dancing around, it's, you know, gathering together lots of people you know it's a happy it's like the happiest moment when two people come together um and i'd say as i previously mentioned when it comes to food i think we're, we're massively that's massively important but also the traditional dress you know we're really we're a small country but we're we're very strong 
and you know these nine tribes. I mean, everybody represents what tribe they they come from. I can I can so feel like I'm back on that day with the headgear and all the ladies. You know, it's just so much fun. And then finally, you get to the room, and then the groom sees you, and the Alaga woman goes, "So, do you really want to see this bride?" The groom goes, "Yes." Are you sure you're gonna take care of her and all that business? And then they let your veil off, and then finally she goes, You can kiss your bride. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of ceremony that goes on behind a Yoruba traditional wedding. At a wedding, it's like a it's like, like a it's a fashion show. They look stunning, and you know, everybody comes and, and wears pretty much you know their Sunday best at a wedding. Like it's it's a real situation, and you know, it's it's great. So what I would say to brides of 2021, have faith, this thing will blow over and you will still get married. And not only that, I'll be there to support you through it because that's what we do. And as a wedding planner, that's what we've all done. Um, been resourceful, been engaging, been encouraging, been supportive, but not only that, showing the love that, that's, that's needed at this time. You know what, in a nutshell, I would say embrace your culture as much as possible. We need to be the generation of young people getting married that um, must not forget where we have come from. I know that my fellow Eritreans that will watch this video will know that even if you don't marry somebody from the same country as you, we stamp our tradition all over that wedding. Because I did. <laughs> I did. And you know, and we, we really, we're, we're a very proud nation and I think that I really hope to see that that continues um, and you know it's something that we need to pass down you know we, we have to we really should um, so I'd say embrace your culture as much as possible now is the time to stay relevant do not shy away and and hide because of the announcements that's been made there's so much things that you can do you can still create content you can still have styled shoots just don't shy away your business if that's your dream and that's your passion and that's what you want to do, then I stay safe, stick at it, keep going and don't give up. I think that, you know, having that traditional, not just for you, not just for your parents, but you're doing it to carry on the generational, this is the story that you tell your children. I think that aspect, that element of your wedding should not be taken for granted. I advise everyone, everyone with a culture, everyone with a tradition, to sort of imbibe their tradition. This is this is the day that you feel yourself as who you are because your culture is your identity.